Go. All right, let's rumble. Spinoza was schoolgirl. Bump, bump, da da bump, da da dump, da da I feel like there should be some sort of like backbeat, backbeat to this. Okay. Absolutely. It's yes. and then then just then just drop the bass, and then just go full on EDM. No, drop the mic. Drop the mic. No, it's not a mic drop moment. I wish I knew how to do those things. I know. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just too. Uh, you're, you're you're not far off of me. Where are your me. sound effects? Oh, I, I got some stuff over there. But basically, I can go with. Uh, oh shoot, I didn't have it turned up. Let me try again. Are you, are you recording? We are recording. Okay. Yay! Yay! We're, not- we're ahead of the game on that one. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have to flip a switch for the phone. There's no. a, see, this is an easy day when it's just the three of us. Turn around. There, there, there we go. go. There, there's dropping We've the beat. We've scared everyone else away. Again so, greetings, today. Earthlings. It is time again for your weekly dose of monkey business. This is your host, Chris, ooh, in the ooh, studio uh-uh. with me, as always, is the irrepressible Billy Dettori. Hello. Yay. And Tanya Metris, who Hi. is slightly less irrepressible, maybe a little bit repressed. And, I'm getting a dirty look now. <laughs> and because it's just the three of us, maybe this music's more appropriate. <laughs> the Three Stooges. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So uh, today, today's podcast is, is a bit of an experiment, actually. I'm just going to roll with it for now. That's all good. I'm going to dance Where's in my, my seat. Email? All right, so today's Uh-oh. today's podcast is going to be a bit kind of an experiment on on our behalf because a couple of people we've we've talked about this at board meetings, we talked about it uh, with some other guests and ticket holders and stuff, and and we want to do as as Monkey Business evolves as a podcast, we want to kind of do a little bit more of a talk show format sometimes down down the road. Uh, so we're going to bring in guests, or we may have somebody call in, somebody from the local art community, somebody for, like a vendor, or maybe one of our future or past guests. Uh, maybe an agent that we've talked to on a regular basis, but people who, you know, may contribute to the overall Flower City Comic Con experience, or you know, at least the very least the, the monkey business experience. Uh, and then we're going to be doing interviews. So in that aspect, uh, we're going to start doing a rehearsal. In essence, in this it's an experiment for today's podcast, we're just going to sit back and the, the three of us are going to interview each other. Oh, fine. And and then you, the listener, gets to kind of critique us and say, you know, that's that was a lame question. There and are my interview questions. You have, oh wow, that's that's a whole long list, isn't there? Yeah, it came through earlier with actually interview questions, and now that email's blank. Oh, that's I don't, great. I don't know, but if I go back to the just the list of emails, uh-huh. it's the second one down, and I can start to see the questions, but it's. Try uh, rebooting your phone and see if maybe that has a has you know, an effect on it. After this next week, this this phone is you're gonna have to say bye bye. Uh, I'll say bye bye to the phone. Yes, because I'm gonna be getting a new one because I've had to reboot this thing. I know that, you've, that your phone has been dying for quite some time, like, and that's what you get for having an iPhone. I'm shut just up. gonna say that. I like no. my iPhone. Oh. Can you forward the questions to me? At which point I can print them out from my computer. There we go. We have we uh, have the I, technology. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just forward to my other email. We're figuring it out on the fly. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> how are we doing this, anyway? Billy, how are you over there? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm real good. I, I, I'm i not a fan of the heat. It's very hot right now. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad I'm in this air-conditioned studio. It's yeah. 68 degrees up here. I feel it bad rules. for yeah, everyone that's, it's that's it's comfortable not up here. in... Yeah, I've got all four window units installed at my house, and they're running at full steam, so RG&E is loving me right mm. now. Uh, but uh, but I am not loving it outside. That is for sure. No, and I've um, our pool still isn't fixed. Uh huh. So we've been I've been uh, still still. It was supposed to be done this week, and it was supposed to be done the week before. Wow. It's supposed to be done this whatever. I called the guy on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and I ended up leaving a voicemail because they never picked up. Oh jeez. So I figured I wouldn't call after five o'clock on a Friday. I wasn't able to do it yesterday because I was doing something else. What was I doing yesterday? Oh, yeah, getting Father's Day stuff. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. It's that Father's Day thing <laughs> yes. going um, on right now. So happy Father's Day. At this point, it would be belated, belated when you're listening to it. But so, uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And then, of course, NCIS like sucked me in for the rest of the day. Oh, I'm sure. Because you know when you have, like, what is it, 27 seasons now? I, I, how long has that show been on the I air? don't know. There was like 300-some-odd episodes that are currently on Netflix, and I'm on uh-huh. season three, episode, like, five. Okay, so, so you've started from the beginning and yeah, you're binging so from there. Yeah, so I'm, uh, what? 50 episodes in, maybe? Something like that. I got like 250. See, there's though. NCIS or CSI. There, there, there's shows I just refer to as the alphabet shows. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Because CS- they're all CSI, they're procedurals CS- with uh-huh. uh, with uh, letters in front of their names. I, and Darn I, it. That didn't work. 
Was now NCIS was a spinoff of something, wasn't it? Was Jag, right? Yes, yes, because it was. Yeah, you know, that's where they started off from. With uh, David James Elliott and uh, and Catherine Bell. Bell. Mm-hmm. Let's see what um, see what I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. the guy. Sure, there's a, there was a guy. There's in there. a guy on there, and then there was Catherine Bell and her cleavage was in that show. <laughs> I remember that vividly. All salute. <laughs> it's all good. No, but I'm a big fan of Mark Harmon. But he's cool. He is cool. I remember watching him on uh, St. Elsewhere. Anyway. We so, really digress. Oh, it's, it, we per, we're professionals at that now. Yes. Well, I'm glad you cut me off before I went into Mark Herman's history. <laughs> oh, what, what? Well, he was a quarterback at UCLA. Oh, then he showed yeah. up on TV, and I'm not sure why, but he was the sexiest man on oh TV. And I remember him in he the was. Battle of the he, Network Stars. He where he was like the quarterback of the Sand football team and just killed everybody. Oh, he's... he's mm. <laughs> but I don't remember well, why he was me. a star like young before, before the alphabet shows. And... Mm-hmm. Wasn't he in one of? Um... He was in this. He was in a couple of soap operas. He was in Saint Elsewhere. He was in. Um... Wasn't one of the? Um... He had a movie called Summer School. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was like. Something where he was a teacher yeah. and they were in for summer school. I'm like, yeah. what was the name of that movie? A completely <laughs> anti Gibbs like character. Yes. You know. Uh, so all right, who wants it... to go first? Uh, Who wants I, to be the first on the hot seat? I could be on the hot seat because be on the hot seat. I don't have my questions for you. <laughs> and because I don't have any questions because I didn't know what we were doing, uh, oh, I, but, I can but you answer can, questions. You can answer questions, but and I can I'm ask sure occasional that you questions. you can uh, come up with questions on the yeah, fly. Yeah, I've already got a couple. Well, Billy, don't. you've been involved in a lot of interviews over the years, haven't uh-huh. you? So, really? So this, is not so, <laughs> so this is not something new for you. Isn't yeah. that part of your job sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I did listen to the uh, the recording of, of you and Weez chatting with, um, with uh, Jerry Lawler. Yeah, that was fun. Um, I really enjoyed uh, having that happen. And, uh-huh. and thanks to you guys for booking Jerry Lawler. Oh, see, that worked out well for everybody. Florida that was City cool. Comic Con. That was a lot of fun. So, and it worked out well for it, you know everybody involved. It was a great time. All right, so we're going to put Tanya on the hot seat first then. So Tanya, yes. Tanya, uh, Allison, Margaret, Elizabeth, Metris the third. Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you got any of my, my middle name in there whatsoever. I got the initial right right off the bat. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, see. I, I had to go back and think. I had to, well, that, do you do that? <laughs> Occasionally, I Occasionally do. Right now, happens. I'm what's, in like, almost what's summer. What's the middle initial? A. 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 Uh, Allison. No. No. Uh, I'm out of A names. Something, Anne. something, Anne. Yeah, something with Green Gables. <laughs> okay. But not okay. spelled that way, though. I know. There's no E. It's not N with an E. No. Nope. All right, Tanya Ann. Yes. Tell us a you little. You know, I've just heard that name way too much in the last two weeks. From your grandmother? From my grandmother. Yes. It's been Tanya Ann, Tanya Ann, Tanya Ann, Terry Ann, Terry Ann, but I love my grandmother. But <laughs> she's just, she's... It's just, there are my questions. They showed up. Yay. Yay. There they are. So Ooh, Tanya, screenshot. Tanya is the VIP liaison of uh, the I Flower am. City Comic Con. She is the, one of the senior most board members of the Mighty Monkey Corporation. But not the oldest. But not the oldest. <laughs> just one of the senior most. She's been around from, the, from day sure. one, and only a couple of people can say that. Uh, and uh, and you are also what else? What do you what do you what what do you, are your other credentials? I have credentials. You have credentials. I do. You have a resume. I do. Oh. I do have a resume. What um, do you do? What do you do when you're not being a geek? Um. Well, I'm a mother of two plus a furry beast that allegedly is mine, but I am not the pet owner of preference. <laughs> I'm the parent of preference. Oh, I see. I'm not the pet owner of preference. Uh-huh. Um. In my spare time. Um. I'm an avid reader. No, just kidding. I am an avid reader. But um, I'm a special education teacher yes. by uh, profession. Do you find that, that being a special education teacher gives takes you a lot a, of patience? It takes a lot, <laughs> but it also gives you a certain skill set in being able to deal with Dan and me and, and Brian and Jason and the, and the rest of the, the oh, board. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you find that that actually gives you a leg up in dealing with the rest of the board? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do this on a daily basis, and then I think I can go home and relax, and no, I have to wrangle five other people <laughs> that are going 12 million different directions. No, except for Deanna. She's not going 12 million different directions. No, she's she's, she's uh, my right-hand woman that's helping me wrangle the rest of you guys. Uh-huh. No, um, yeah, it, it definitely being a teacher has helped me with the rest of the um, organization stuff for FC3. Because I'm definitely logistic oriented minded type mm-hmm. thing. It's like eyes are dotted, T's are crossed, and then I forget badges. 
And then you forget the badge. Home boxes of badges. Boxes of badges. Left and by I'm the, so the washing sorry, machine. Sybil, and I knew that I had them. It's just a matter of where they were. But mm-hmm. you always have a tendency to forget something. But we had the blank ones, so we mm-hmm. were able to do that. And I, I think that's what um, one of my strengths is in regards to that. But it also can be one of my weaknesses because I am so organized that I always have a tendency to forget something. Now, you you got to understand the difference. This is basically a, a an entertainment interview. It's not a job interview. You, you already have the job, so you don't have to worry about strengths and weaknesses so much. I know, much. but still, it, 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 like people have want. They're like they only see like the outside professional person, but mm-hmm. like, they have to acknowledge that. I, like yeah, I definitely have weaknesses. I, I think all of us on the board at one point or another qualify for the the duck on the pond analogy, where we look all calm and serene above the water, but below water, those feet are just flying and yeah. you know pedaling for all they're worth. Um, were, were you always kind of a kind of a, a geek? Were you always into like the nerd culture or anything like that, um, or was that something you kind of developed into over time? Oh, well, growing up, I was always a huge Star Wars fan. So, mm-hmm. um, Princess Leia for third grade Halloween, my hair was long enough to do the cinnamon buns. Um, Yay! Do you have for- pictures? I don't necessarily have pictures personally, but uh-huh. I bet my mom does somewhere because she see those. saves everything. I got to see those. So, um, so tell, tell so her I need to see those. I didn't even need, need a wig at that point because my hair was long enough to actually do the braids and the cinnamon buns. No, mm-hmm. it's really not. Um, yeah, but so yeah, I've always liked sci-fi and fantasy. And my dad was, um, I remember watching Star Trek with um, my dad, mm-hmm. um, all that type of stuff, but. Not necessarily like full geek on until like truly like the nineties. Like I, I enjoyed the movies and things like that, but mm-hmm. to re- like really dig deep into any like sci fi fantasy that type, it didn't really kick in until I met Randy, and okay. that's where he immersed me into what's Dungeons and Dragons? What what is this? So you, you became a, a you became a tabletop life. gamer when yes. you met your husband. Because I'm an only child, so therefore it's like I didn't have that mm-hmm. exposure to any of it, and my cousins, they weren't in that set either. So we were just like, I had cousins that were athletes, and then cousins that were music fanatics, and then then there was me that was like in between, that was a reader and a cheerleader and a, mm-hmm. things like that. But I was just like, eh. So eh. I just it came on to me late in life. Which in my twenties, that was late in life. <laughs> yeah, but do you do you, do you find that it's like now it's a kind of a part of you, or do you find it's like you can drop it at any time? Or I don't think I could drop this at any time. No, you, no you're in. I, you're in now. I'm in up to here. <laughs> she's just putting her hand <laughs> way over her <laughs> way head. Way over this my. Point. I am you're way, way, way over, over your my head. head yes. Much like we are with the convention itself at this uh, point. Yes. So, yeah. Well, well, to to piggyback onto that question, let's say you moved. You, you left Rochester, Chris. Dan, Brian, the rest of them, your gaming friends weren't around. Would you stop gaming? Would you find another group of people? How dare you ask me that question? <laughs> no, that's a good one. There, I like there's that. There's no moving. There, there, there's, there's, no, there's no, no, it's a hypothetical know, if you were to no move moving. away. Tan- Tanya, there's uh, a call for a spe- special education specialists in and, Hawaii. In Hawaii. And, and see, um, she's thinking about it now. <laughs> she's like, all right, listen, all I have 12 years until I truly can retire from teaching. So I don't know. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. And you've yeah. been at it for like 20 some. No, you know 18 years 18? I've been teacher. Really? Yeah. Wow. I don't look that old. No, you don't. No. no. All, all my students think, because I'm, I'm like, I've been doing this for a while. They're like, yeah, like five years. I'm like, uh, no, try 18. They're like, wow. And that's 18. That, that's impressive. And that's 18 years at mm-hmm. my current job. Mm-hmm. I taught for four years prior to that. See, so that's I why have, I was thinking 20s. I have 22, mm-hmm. 23 years experience in education, but my mm-hmm. first five years didn't count because it wasn't a public education mm-hmm. spot. One was okay. in a Catholic school, and then one was in a private um, organization. So, so, in other words, when you retire, you're going to start an anti-aging farm. Something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I just have good genetics. I guess so. I think so. Yeah, but, but no. no okay, now you're, talk in, about you're in this dream dream thing about moving. Okay, uh, I think I would have to like figure out how to Skype in, or if I like won the lottery to like have everyone else come with me to game. <laughs> so you I, wouldn't find a new group. You would try to I, try I to think, ca- stay a, try, a connected yeah, to your I don't old know. one. I think I would definitely try to stay connected to my old group because I have a, just a hard time with like new people coming in and mm-hmm. and figuring out. 
their little nuances and things like that. And we have such a great group of people that we game with that we can get together and like blast each other with just teasing mm-hmm. and things like that because mm-hmm. we're more than just friends, we're family type thing. So mm-hmm. I, I think I would have a really hard time coming up with a new group of people to game with. Not that I wouldn't try or whatever, but I think it wouldn't be the same. Okay. Good Which answer. really wouldn't be the same. Now, when it comes to tabletop gaming, yes. uh, I know your preference is to be a player, but have you, you have DM'd in I the past? I have DM'd. Uh-huh. I have the attention span of a gnat. Okay. If you couldn't tell when I'm on my phone during a gaming session, uh-huh. like last night. So so you wouldn't be able to um, really, you don't, you're not I, into it as much. No, as much as I'm um, organized and things like that, I don't necessarily have the super knowledge to be able to manage these many player characters and all the monsters and the mm-hmm. module. I'm like, I've done it, I've DM'd a couple times. Um, I've killed off a couple players. That was beautiful when I killed Don with a rat swarm. <laughs> um, killed Randy a couple times. That was only paybacks for all the times that he's killed my See, character. See, that, that's the that's that, the, that's the, that's the, the core of a happy marriage right there is when you're when you're a husband and wife and you can kill each other off at the, at the gaming table <laughs> at on the a regular table basis. Type thing. Take it out so, there. Take it out there. So, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I just, I don't necessarily have the endurance or stamina to continue after about two or three months. Okay. I, I like, I burn out really quickly about Well, you that. could do like a short kind of like a one-off or a quick dungeon like, or something like, like I that. Like, I wouldn't mind running, like, I think I did, um... The two more horrors module just to do interim mm-hmm. in between things, and I and Randy was playing like um, uh, Sir Band Aid or something. Sir Band Aid. <laughs> he was playing some type of cleric, wow. only, and he was a background character because he's been either through the module or run the module so many times that uh-huh. he just yeah he's he was a, a supporting character, not the main character in there. It's just like one one of the last times I've been through it. Gotcha. When we were doing the in between, waiting for Doug or mm-hmm. Evan or whoever to step up, that I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna stay back here because I know it's coming. And <laughs> I know what the module looks like, and I know you can put a ring in there and it'll open. And so poop. I had there we to, go. but I'm like, I knew there was a secret door somewhere, exactly where, and I knew the juggernaut was coming because <laughs> because that's some things I can remember in the module. The juggernaut, yes. bitch. And so it's trying to not meta game and yeah. things like that. But no, I don't think I would get. I wouldn't want to get rid of my group of gaming friends. All right, so I got two more maybe questions. A I got too. Maybe well, maybe. <laughs> A, no, we Wexler. love both the Wexlers. So, uh, so I got two more questions for two you. Two more? Oh, two these more. are hard questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with a gaming question. Okay. All right. Uh, if you could put together a an all star gaming panel for for the convention, for instance, uh, if we could sit down and just have a D and D game for a couple of hours, who would, who would you put on that panel? On the panel. Yeah. Um. Well, we'll pull in a, a holographic image of Gary Gygax from Beyond the Grave. Hey, come on. If we can do it with Tupac, <laughs> we can do it with Gary Gygax. Okay. That would be awesome. <laughs> no, um, it would have been awesome to have met him. Um, I think to put on the panel, I would definitely have to go with Randy. Uh-huh. Um, I would have to go with you. Okay. Um, then to throw a mark in there also to the primary DMs that I've had for the majority of the gaming sessions are because you guys all have different DMing styles. I've never played for Mark before, so no. I don't know like, what he's like. You're the storyteller. You're the one mm-hmm. that has the more role-playing type mm-hmm. thing. And, and Mark, is um, he's got the, the storytelling aspect and the... Um, tactical. Uh, tactical type stuff. And, mm-hmm. and he's definitely the one that will think outside the box to go against anyone that thinks outside the box like Evan and Elric type <laughs> thing. Um, let me get back to the mic. Uh, let's see. I think maybe um, uh, a player's perspective, maybe Scott, because he's the one that can uh, figure out how to strategically min-max. Uh, our, our buddy Scott Bliss? Yes. Okay, to, so, uh, so, so so far you're husband Randy, yes. your friend Mark, uh-huh. me, and Scott Bliss. So far, yes. so far. So basically, your local group, the part of the local group. Okay, um, and maybe if I, I could, maybe Will Wheaton. There you go. In there. Now we're talking. And Felicia Day. And I okay. Think. Yeah. See, so, so now you're talking. Yeah. So it's like this. Then plus the ones that from the guild or from their mm-hmm. their tabletop. Gotcha. Or that type of thing. Absolutely. So, 
I can't think of the guy's name right now, but he's um he's big. Uh, he's got a podcast series, and he's big involved with uh, like Force Gray and stuff like that. I can see his face right now, but I can't think of his name. It's Mark something or other. But I'd love to 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 table with him once in a while, just because he's just so freaking into it. It's awesome. But uh, and now my 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 second and my last question for this particular interview at this point, where where do you see yourself? Um, in terms of your contribution, well, okay, where would you like to see FC3 going? How would you guide it? Where would you go with it? What are, what are some of the projects you want to, to, to partake of? Oh, God, that's a, that's a very difficult question. Um... Well, we're here for hard-hitting entertainment news here, you know. <laughs> the same TMZ, the same the TMZ, TMZ, you know. Uh... Miss Petrus, Miss Petrus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Miss M, Miss M. Yeah. Yo, Ms. you, yo, you in the corner, you at your desk. Get off your phone. Um the laugh. <laughs> um, let's see. I, I tell you that, that I'm drawing a blank. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> you. I, yes. And how you contribute to FC? Where would you want to push FC three? Where would you? What would you like um, to see it accomplish? I think that push the um, the envelope a little bit to bring in someone that's more phenomenal than our current guests. I mean, I I saw the whole David Tennant thing Mm -hmm. at AwesomeCon. Mm -hmm. He's, like, selling that. I'm like, that would be amazing to push. But... That 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 is like a dream, or or like bring. Oh, I know. John if, we were, if we were to bring in, something. if we were to bring in those guys, then we would have to turn the Empire Room into Panel Room One because that would just be like five thousand. And, and, and strong that that would be right the there. whole that would Empire be, Room. Yeah, that would not, it would be North and South. Yeah, so we would have thing. to drop the the vendor floors and, back and downstairs, down, down, downstairs in the PC. to the whole downstairs. Yeah, and the panel rooms downstairs to the and then basically it would be like the entire upstairs would be Panel Room mm, One. Yeah, would <laughs> be insane. So so yeah, that, that I think, but I think. Part of my contribution to see where this is to listen to what our fans are saying in order to bring in someone mm-hmm. or the the genres that they enjoy. I'm like, I know that we've been doing stuff that, yeah, we enjoy and that we would think that our, our fans would enjoy for FC3, but mm-hmm. definitely looking more at what they would they would want mm-hmm. and and try to. Reach for the stars. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Listen to you. <laughs> I got them all today. Holy, <laughs> holy Casey Kasem, Batman. Nice. Zoinks. Yeah. So, no. I Yeah, I think so. <laughs> all right. Good job. How do you feel? Uh, still a little on the hot seat. Well, okay. Yeah. Then we can shift it off. This has been Monkey Business. We're still working on it. We're going to take a, a quick moment here. We're going to we're gonna pause the tape so we can oh, chat okay. a little bit. And, sure. uh, and we're going to come back, and there's going to be some more. Uh, and we'll maybe we'll throw a song in the middle or something like that during the recording of it. I don't know, so we can have a little commercial break action. But uh, <laughs> but this, bit, this is Monkey Business, brought to you by the Mighty Monkey Corporation. Yay. Yes, fish eaters, the days of troublesome scaling, cutting, and gutting are over. Because Super Bassomatic 76 is the tool that lets you use the whole bass with no fish waste without scaling, cutting, or gutting. Here's how it works. Catch a bass, remove the hook, and drop the bass. That's the whole bass into the Super Bassomatic 76. Now adjust the control dial so that that bass is blended just the way you like it. All right, and we are back. This is Monkey Business, your podcast for the future of all things geek. And uh, and I am your host, Chris. In the studio with me, as always, Billy and Tanya. I am uh, off the hot seat today. She is off the hot seat at this point. Now Yay! She, we started the first block of the, the first segment of the, the show today. We were interviewing Tanya. We're starting to work on our interview skills because we're going to start I bringing still some need folks a in. A lot of help. Well, you know that's okay, but th- this Lots is how we help. see. This is how we're this is how we're going to do it. We're going to practice and we're going to talk to each other. And we're going to have our listeners critique us, and, and we're going to get their feedback because these guys are really good at feedback. We've gotten we've gotten almost 250 responses now on on the, the FC3 2017. It fe- took me almost survey. a year to feel comfortable talking on Mike, and uh-huh. that just totally went out the window it's again. An, it's an evolution. It's <laughs> it a, just totally went out the window oh, again. Stop. Because being interviewed, yes. No, oh, you're I, fine. I understand that I was fine, but I was just like. Ah, ah. But but guess what? Because now now we get to put Billy on the we're going to well, put Billy on the now. Hot seat. Here here's the odd thing about me is that I'm I'm shy. I'm really shy. Uh-huh. But <laughs> I love about talking about myself. I that's don't know why. So that's great. I, you can't shut me up once you get me talking I mean, about I, something I like. That's good. And yes. I don't always like me, but I'll still talk about <laughs> we that. Like you. We, we, we like, we'll like you. We like you enough for you. 
you know, between between us and and Sue, we got we got liking Billy covered. Okay, all right. Thank and his you. cute so, kitties. Yeah. I, so I, we I have my kitties. So we have with us is our our ever present the the heart of the the Ghostbusters over here, Billy Dettori, local Hello. radio legend. Yeah. Uh, you know the the <laughs> the man who has been gracious enough to to basically be our engineer and our producer and and the, the guy who helps keep the podcast moving and and moving and grooving. Uh, and has been our host every every time we get together for a recording session. Billy, tell us a little about yourself, my friend. Okay, uh, let's see. I was born in 1965 in the city of Rochester, New York. Whoa. Oh, see, you are native. Awesome. Yeah, I'm right here from Rochester. Beautiful. Same here. Uh, let's see. I Over the years, I, I graduated from East High School. Okay. 198, class of 83. Uh-huh. Uh, it's funny, just a couple months ago, someone... I, I forget how this wound up happening, but someone mentioned their high school yearbook. So it made me go to the library and look at my, to find the 83 East High School yearbook. Uh-huh. And I recognized almost nobody from it. It's almost <laughs> like my high school years didn't exist. I go, who are these people? Well, how many what were in your graduating class? <laughs> it was a lot. It was like 300. Wow. Now, you see, that that's strange because what was your graduating class? 173. And mine was 165. Uh-huh. So it's just so odd for me to see. A I, I remember like my two or three in... best friends. And after that, I'm like, who are these people? I obviously spent and a bunch of time. how many of them friended with... you on Facebook after that of your high school classmates? Well, it's funny. One of them, it turns out, uh, we've already been friends because he's the assistant general manager of the Rochester Red Wings. Oh, jeez. We, <laughs> we've known each other in that capacity. Okay. And it's always like... I know him from somewhere, oh. mm-hmm. and well, it well, turns 300 out three hundred plus classmates. How was, do you know everyone? Is us flipping through the yearbook? <laughs> like, oh. Hey, that's him. I know him. But that's it, funny. Uh, but if you're interested in the geek stuff, and yeah. I think we've talked about this before, as a geek, almost from the start, like uh-huh. I, I loved reading. You know, once I was old enough to read, uh, I, I, you know, you know my OCD type, where I have to you be have a to completist. Stuff? Yeah. So once I started reading Beverly Cleary's Henry Huggins books, mm. had to read them all. Mm-hmm. Once I started reading the Hardy Boys books, read them all. Got to read them all. I was an Auntie Drew so, yeah. person. So it, I can see that. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, since my first comic book, I think, was a 1974 issue of the Justice League, my brother bought me that. My brother always enjoyed comics, wasn't a, a huge nerd like me, but, you know, mm-hmm. let's give him some comic books and... So he got me a, a couple, and from there I was just hooked, you know, from the, uh, I forget, issue 123 or one some of Justice League. I, I found a copy of it recently. So do you have to go back to mention. issue one from Justice League? Oh, I, I wish. I, if I could, I would, but I, I don't have the money to go back yeah. and buy all do the you, issues. Do you still have that original comic book somewhere in I, one of your boxes or I something? I have a, re- I bought a, another copy a couple years ago. No, okay. I don't. Okay. I don't have the original one that I bought. Uh huh. Um, and Star Trek was was my jam when the right the original the, re- series. the reruns were on in when the early seventies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on Channel Ten, that got me hooked. That in in search of back to back on Saturday nights. Oh, see, that was that was that was also that was great. I loved mm-hmm. that. I, I got it because I can still hear the the theme song to In Search of in my head at out, like on a cue. It's it's and I also remember Space nineteen ninety nine being on, but mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you anything about. I, I almost want to go back and watch that somehow. Martin Landau with a phaser, basically. Yeah, that's about it. Hmm. So so I want to watch Space nineteen ninety nine. But I, I I've been a geek since you know six seven eight years old. There you go. That's awesome. Now, um, as as an efficient, you basically were saying you're talking. You kind of got into Justice League. I know mm-hmm. your big fondness for Batman and uh-huh. things like that. So DC is your is your thing. Yeah, like, my theory has always been that mm-hmm. of the big two companies, DC and Marvel, every comic book nerd likes both of them, but mm-hmm. everybody prefers one over the other right. for some reason. Now, and I at, do like DC. And I'm looking at your shirt and it says Detective Comics. Is that what really DC stands for? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, because I learned it, that today. Originally, <laughs> DC was uh, National Publications. Yeah, something like that. I remember when we did our comic book um, mm-hmm. podcast a while back. Was that talked about then that I didn't really pay attention? Yeah. It was okay. talked about then. You didn't pay attention, but that's well, okay. Well, we still like love you anyway. Comic books, it's 
Definitely yeah. goes over my head type thing. <laughs> comic books go over my head. Now, Superman was the first one in action comics number one, mm-hmm. but the next big one was Batman's first appearance in Detective Comics number 27. Oh. So mm-hmm. they grabbed DC from Detective Comics. I see. Now, do you, are there any Marvel titles that have caught your attention, or is it pretty much just, I'm, you know? No, I've always liked Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, you uh-huh. know, the big ones. Uh, right now, I really like the Silver Surfer comic that uh-huh. that's uh, Dan Slott uh, yeah. writing, and um, why can't I think of the artist's name? It's a husband and wife team. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of their names either at the moment. I'm but I, I really like this the Silver Surfer comic right now. That's my favorite mar- of the Marvel. Good deal. Hmm. Okay. At the moment. So. Now, am I hearing correctly that that on the horizon, that Batman they're planning on uh, on a plot twist where he's going to become a villain? Are they? I, I haven't. I just I read something about that the other I, day. That I missed there's gonna that. Be, and... There's going to be a. I don't know if it's a mini series mm-hmm. or it's going to be a twist in one of the regular ones. But it look it's looking like they're going to turn Batman into one of the bad guys. I'll check it out. It, to me, people get so worked up about stuff like that. Captain uh-huh. America's a bad guy. I know. That's, Shut that's, up. That's, it's it's, it's make believe. It. Yeah, everything will <laughs> everything will work out. And of they'll retcon it, it, and something will something will write right over right. But well, as a wrestling fan, I'm used to good guys becoming bad guys and bad okay, guys see, becoming that kind good of help. guys. Okay, that fits into it. Is that the face it. and heel? Yes. yes. I was listening. You were listening okay. to that one. I still don't understand it, but I was listening. Sorry. Right. Um, are you up to date on Gotham? I have I've only watched one episode of Gotham. Uh-huh. Uh, the very first one and I keep meaning to go to it on Netflix. Oh, okay. It's like I I we're spoiled as as Americans now or as a society to With where Hulu we can and Netflix and we can all that. binge watch where I don't like waiting week to week to week. Oh, I know. And so, you know, Gotham is there whenever I want it on Netflix and I probably mm-hmm. should get to that being the Batman guy I am, but you know, I, I haven't yet. Is is it good? Did, just have you now watched a, it? Oh I, yeah, I'm up to date. Too. I'm not. I'm way behind because I've only watched. I've watched the entire first season, mm-hmm. and I've only watched a little bit of the second season. But I did like what I saw. Mm-hmm. I, I did enjoy it. it was a, It was a, a good show overall. Um, but I have lost track. I've lost track of everything. I don't think I've watched any of my comic book shows in this calendar year. You said year. that you weren't even doing like up to date on the CW verse of regards. No, to... that's right. The Arrow verse. I'm, I'm way behind. And I, on. I really enjoy those shows. Supergirl is one of my both favorites. of your geek cards because I'm ahead of you on both of them. You know you what's kill, what's killing me is I watching am. Doctor Who like all the regular normal mm-hmm. human beings one one episode a week. It's, it's now <laughs> you can take my Doctor Who card because I am not up to date on Doctor Who. I've oh, seen the good. season premiere. This, of this series year. ten has been amazing. I've only seen the series. Premiere. But anyway, uh, but this is about Billy. It Hi, is Billy. about Billy. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hi, Tommy. Um, <laughs> Billy, when, when you first started getting involved with, with Flower City Comic Con and, and us, us sociopaths, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what, what were your initial thoughts? What, what were you kind of contemplating? God help him. Yeah, no, I know. I, it was like I found some cool people that that like the same stuff I do. Yay. And uh, we found you know, our tribe member. We, we've we. I think I've told this story before. I got mm-hmm. the email from Deanna. Yeah. I answered some questions, and you guys contacted me and Susan about maybe helping you out in, in the, some various ways. And I thought, that's really cool. You that know? Was, Billy emailed us back. <laughs> that, that was the, like, the shock. Deanna's like, oh, my God, Billy Dottori emailed but me back. You, you don't understand. Like I said, <laughs> someone asked me my opinion. Yeah. You don't understand. And I, I get to legend. share it. You are a legend. No, I'm not. God. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, it still shocks me. Like I, I was at a concert last night. Uh-huh. Um, went to go see Elvis Costello out at C Mac, and people were every time people recognize me, it truly shocks me. And it's like, where do I know this person from? Uh-huh. Do I, have I met them? It, and no, they listen to the radio, yeah. and it it stuns me every single time. Honestly, that's fantastic. And I I still don't understand my appeal. So. <laughs> But, it's, it's your your wit, charm, and creativity, my friend. That's all there I, is to it. I, I was very happy when you guys emailed me, uh-huh. and, and I got in touch with you guys, and have been hanging out with you folks ever since. And yes, I don't make new friends easily, so it's 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 real nice to actually have some new friends. Well, I tell you what, you're you're definitely a welcome member of the family. We, we've mm-hmm. enjoyed having you with us, and and uh, and Susan, you know, when the two of you get together and you you share with us and you have your input and and you want to tell us everything you're thinking about it's just it's just it's so much fun it's and we're not so always fun. right so <laughs> well, we're I, I wish you wouldn't take we aren't either. my sometimes wow he, I, I don't know I, I just feel like I've guided you in the wrong spots nah nonsense well you know that that's up to us too because you know we're mm-hmm. not 
we're not just blindly following, but yeah, you know, it's, know. it's nice to have people who who have a little bit of a different perspective and know a little bit more about certain things than we do yeah. uh, along the way. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions of you that um, that I've asked of, of Tanya so far, Uh-oh. and and that is uh, in essence, he had advance warning. He had advance warning. <laughs> yeah, but th- that's that's sort he, of he uh, now knows that you're going to ask him a similar question that you asked me. Yeah. So now he has a little more time to think about it. That's not fair. That's okay. Well, you know, in the you, industry, you'd have to assume I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, during the comic book one, I was not. I was. Well, let me let me ask because you know you do interviews on a regular mm-hmm. basis. You know, you and Weez and and the gang and Polly will do interviews. Is the person who's going to be on the phone or in the studio? Are they aware ahead of time of some of the things you're going to be talking about? Do you call them ahead and say, "Hey, you know, just, these are some questions no. we throw your way"? Yeah, I mean, they'll send us sometimes some talking points. Okay, but and we'll try and hit those. Well, obviously, we'll be promoting whatever they're calling in to promote because uh-huh. that's only fair, right? But other than that, no, right. I mean, occasionally, we get an a, an occasional don't talk about this. Like if there's and something that's the red flag, and yeah. then if there's something controversial saying, in the oh, news yeah. uh-huh. about something, although generally that's normally the the celebrity's person that okay Be, dictates like an agent that, or something. and it turns out that not always the, the person being interviewed doesn't always care. Okay, you know, like we interviewed Uma Thurman once, uh-huh. and at the time she had just broken up from Ethan Hawke. Oh, jeez. And so the person goes, uh, the the manager, whoever, uh-huh. don't mention Ethan Hawke. And, so where does Weez go? <laughs> well, no, we actually did. Well, okay. We, he actually brought it up. I know we were told not to ask you about Ethan Hawke. She goes, I don't care. <laughs> 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 was like, you got a question, ask me. I don't mind. That's Weez. good. So that was fun. That's cool. So. Well, considering, like I said, because I'm always trying to learn where to go. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm learning for ideas. I want to I want to pick up and, and, and move forward mm-hmm. with stuff. What would be something you would like us to see stressed uh, for FC3 going forward? What's some like some of the projects, some of the genres? And well, aspects? it's Tanya did bring this up. And mm-hmm. I've noticed just in as I look at different conventions and see their Facebook pages and everybody. And I don't know if this is right, but. Everybody wants that big guest now, that mm-hmm. that over the top guest. Yeah, and to me, that's not always what these things were about, but it's what they've become. Okay, and you know, it's people. Now, it's a matter of money, obviously. Right, you, you got to pay these people to come in, and the big guests dictate a bigger chunk of change. But I'm I'm wondering if if we need to real allocate some funds. To one big guest instead of two medium or guests who okay. are still fun. The, right. the guests we've had have been phenomenal, but nowadays people want to see movie stars, and I don't always like that. Like I, I've been to a couple bigger cons where it becomes impossible to navigate your way through a room uh-huh. to because get to the, the panel rooms. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean there, there's like a. Uh, it seems like there should be a middle in there somewhere. I got gotcha. So finding a balance. Yeah. You know, and that's kind and I of thought something we've we talked done about. A, we've done a good job of that. So far, but, so good. I think. I know. Yeah. I know that we've we've leaned in a couple of different directions over the past couple of years. We might lean in a direction for future shows, but we'll always try to kind of have that balance to to push things and, and make sure there's you know like we so we say where it all comes together. Mm-hmm. You know, so we want to make sure that anybody who walks in the doors uh, will will see something that they they will like. But uh, I, I, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make people more aware right. of of your yeah. uh, of our little undertaking here, mm-hmm. and that's that's always going to be the it's like an uphill battle for a show yeah. like this in, in this kind of a market is just getting the word out. And I think we did better this year mm-hmm. for the 17 show, and and we've already we're already learning ways to to push it forward for the 18th. Yeah. So. And we have dates for the 18th. We do have the dates for the 18th. Is that I are we official so. on that yet? I don't know. Okay, let's. I'm well, not going to jinx it at the moment because I know. Well, we do have dates for the 18th. We do show, have 18. We're, we're, right now, well, right now the 2018 show is Mother's Day weekend of May 12th and May 13th. But um, I, I'm going to put a little asterisk next to that because there's actually subject to change. Su- it's subject to change at this point. We're we're making some maneuvers to see if there's a, a little bit more of a, an opener, more more opener. Yeah, <laughs> English major. I was an English major in college. <laughs> a more open experience for, or a more open weekend. To make it a little one bit with better. less conflicts. Yes, one with less conflicts. That's actually the best way to put it. See, right that's there. part of the problem with Rochester. There's always <clears throat> there's a lot so to many do. Things to do. Festivals. Once festival season hits, I'm when does festival you. season yeah. truly hit? 
When I think the in first one is Lilac, Lilac Festival. Lilac in May, yeah. typically. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and then they go through Christmas, right? Yeah. And pretty much. Pretty yeah. much, okay. Yeah. Predominantly, I mean, I know where we want to reside. FC3 is going to eventually live in April. Because every you know? everybody thinks they want summer till 90 degrees shows up. <laughs> Billy does yeah. not want summer. No. He wants 70 degree weather. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's just yeah. me. All right. I, I don't know Anything if my else? answer was uh, helpful or... Oh, always. Always helpful. Or understandable. Like you said, well, it's, it's, it, you don't even have to have the right answer all the time. Mm. Just, it, you know, some information to keep the discussion going. And that's the thing. So we're going to uh, we're going to pop off again. We're going to throw another little interlude okay. in. Okay. And we're going to let Billy... Another uh, commercial break. Okay, another yeah. commercial break. And, uh, and this has been Monkey Business, and we'll be right back. Hey parents, tired of looking at your dog and wishing you were a baby? Of course you are. Then stop by Baby Dogs R Us, where you'll find everything you need to disguise your dog as a baby. My baby dog looks adorable in his bonnet and onesie. You'll be the talk of the play date with your baby dog. This is Cody. He just started teething, so he's a little cranky. Aw, this is Roscoe. He just learned how to pee outside. Um, that's a dog dressed as a... How dare you speak to my baby that way? He's a good boy. Baby dogs are us. Make your dog look like a baby today. I love this job. I really do. <laughs> Welcome back and to Monkey a lot Business. Of people that think that their dogs I know or whatever are their babies, and then the cats too. There's yes. the, the cat fish. Stop system. talking about me. Oh, what? I know. <laughs> How many cats do you have? Uh, Susan, I have three. Three. Geraldine, Dora. Geraldine, Dora, and Precious. Then Precious. Precious. Okay. And uh, in the studio with me is Billy and Tanya, and we're uh, we're practicing interviewing each other today. And uh, and we're hoping you're having some fun listening in. Don't you get a lot of practice with like interviewing at least once a year? Well, that's that's see that's that job interview program. I'm an alumni of the Aquinas Institute, and and so the alumni are invited back usually in December, uh, once a once a school year, and we put uh, sophomore class through mock interviews because we want them to get ready for. You know, they're getting ready for their first jobs. You know, and, and usually the program's hand in hands with Wegmans, which is really great. Uh, and so it gives these kids a chance to be in, a, in, a, in an interview setting. So your daughter was put on the hot seat this my year. My daughter was in the hot seat because she was a sophomore this year, and I, they actually sat her with me, and it was hilarious. We just had such a great time talking to each other. And then once she got up from my table, uh, she had to go someplace else. She had, they had to send her to another one because they knew it was a little, I was a little biased, so <laughs> they wanted to make sure she had an accurate uh, idea of the, the. And that was actually, I was from what I'm being told, I was actually harder on her than the other person oh. was. So <laughs> Isn't that always the way. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm always going to be hard on her because I want her to be a good kid. And she is. She is She's a good awesome. Kid. She's awesome. So anyway, so we've been practicing interviewing each other, and and Tanya was uh, was kind to go first, and she yeah. she's still recovering from the the trauma. Still recovering. Still recovering Weeks from later. the trauma. And um, actually, hours later. Hours, you know, hour, you know half okay, hour, minutes. <laughs> and uh, and our our legend here, Billy Detori, uh, sat on the hot seat. Yeah. And uh, so it's just the three of us today, and and so I guess that uh, by we process truly elimination, did scare everyone else away. We did scare everyone. Well, today is Father's Day. Uh, we're recording on Father's Day. It's it's Sunday, the what, the eighteenth? Yes. And and so everybody else is understandably busy. Sybil's off uh, doing a, doing a thing, and uh, Dolly is at home chilling out right now. She hurt herself a little bit. So good, bless you, uh, Dolly. We hope you're feeling Dee's better. Doing Father's Dee's Day. He's doing the Father's Day. Our thing. Father's Day celebration is later today. Yep, mine my, is as well. My dad's at the movies. Exactly what they're seeing. I don't know. They've seen everything <laughs> lately. Uh, so. Ange, Ange and Ray are off doing a Father's Day thing with Angie's husband. And, uh, and and I'm not a father, and my father is dead, so oh, I get to be that. here. You have so. three kitties. Yeah, and they Did didn't they... buy me a thing. They didn't buy him a thing. Oh, you know. They didn't leave you cats. any presents yeah. anywhere in the house Actually, today? Actually, Susan's getting her, her her car fixed. We were on our way home from uh, uh, C-Mac? C-Mac last night, mm-hmm. and her brakes started going. Oh, Ooh. geez. That's not good. So she needed, turns out she needed new uh, rear brakes. Which were fine on the way up and started making really bad noises on the way home. Well, I'm glad so. that you guys got home safely. Yeah. yeah. So. So today, yes. So today's been a bit busy. So, but you know, it's good because it gives us a chance because we, we've always been. When it comes right down to it, the three of us are usually the 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 core. We're the of, ones that are always podcast. here. We're the, always here every time. So we gotta. And and now Tanya is rubbing her hands together <laughs> because she realizes it's, you're next. I am next, and that's fine. Okay, go ahead, throw throw it away, throw it at me. Throw it you away. Know, I got to tell you, throw it away. I got to tell you, it was weird for for FC three seventeen. Um, 
I mean, I knew when when this whole project first started three years ago, I knew that I was going to end up doing a lot of the, the, the media presence. I was going to be the one who's going to be out in the public talking about it the most. I got that. And, but to have it actually happen was an entirely different animal. To be Didn't si- someone ask you for your autograph? Somebody asked me for my autograph uh, after the Star Wars panel, and that nice. was so cool. I mean, the kid was great. He was having a lot of fun, and his dad, he and his dad came up, and they took, yes, the, they took pictures with me. And uh, and then they asked me. Uh, somebody asked me for my autograph somewhere along the line. I don't remember if it was him or not, but it was just such a wild thing to to suddenly. And it's like when Billy was talking about earlier, and you know, when somebody when comes up recognize and recognizes them. you, and and you're like, well, where do I know you from? And they're like, oh, I've been listening, I've been watching, I'm paying attention. And and I'm like, oh my god, that's just when they acknowledge your contribution to you mm-hmm. know the local community. It's it's just it's a lot of fun. And then to be parked in front of cameras and. You know, reporters are asking you questions and bloggers were, were asking me questions and the DNC stops by and they're like, oh, OK, we want to know what you're thinking. About. You want to know what I think about stuff? Really? <laughs> Poor sod. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? So, yeah, that's that happened. And so I'm kind of starting to get used to it. So go ahead. Do do your worst, Metris. <laughs> No, I was going to say, you're doing a really good job interviewing yourself. I know. I t- <laughs> well, I talk to you- myself all the time, really. You should see me in the car when I'm driving around town. It's <laughs> Uh, that, uh, yeah, I'm no. sorry for your coworkers. Yeah, well, it's it's there. You have it. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So yes. So go ahead. We'll do the same question that you threw at Billy and I. Uh-huh. When did the geekdom start for you? When the geekdom started for me, I I will tell you, I was very young. I mean, I I was born in '70, uh, and so a, a lot of the stuff that I was exposed to as a kid was some of the same things that Billy was. Uh, so I, I watched the Star Trek reruns uh, in syndication. I watched, you know, in search of. I watched. You know, I, I've told often the anecdote of when Star Wars hit the theaters, you know, of, of badgering my father to take me to the, the movie theaters over and over and over again. The six, six, seven year old child, you know, who just wanted to see the adventures of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo over mm-hmm. and over again. I think we saw it when it was first out. We saw it like maybe a dozen times in the theaters. My dad was so kosher about taking me to the, you know, so cool about taking me to the theater often. And and so it kind of that that really kind of what got the imagination brewing and I never got into, you know, what? I didn't get into comic books until I was in college. But, oh. um, yeah, I, I had a, a I, not my roommate. Well, my roommate was a comic book collector, but my, uh, the, the, who had become one of my best friends in college who lived down the hall from me, my buddy Paul, uh, he was really avid. And he would tell me stories about what the X-Men were doing and what, you know, all these different characters and how they interacted with each other and the adventures they would go on. And that, that was it. I was, I was pulled in because of that. And where where Billy was a DC guy, I was I, I was a Marvel guy because of the the stories that I was being regaled. You with. want to be Tony Stark? I totally want to be Tony Stark now. I yeah. mean, back in the day, I was all about being Peter Parker because you know Spider Man was has always been kind yeah. of like my main main title. But now now that especially after the movies and whatnot, and Robert Downey Jr. and seeing all the gadgets and gizmos and tech, I'd love to have an Iron Man suit of my own. That'd be freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, Chris, yes, uh, sir. What? Now we all have nine geek. Interests. What uh-huh. are some of yours? What my non-geek interests? Yeah. Oh my god, I don't even know if I have any that are non-geek at this point. Because well, actually, we can turn anything geeky. I'm a baseball yeah. fan, but yeah. I can get geeky about it. Absolutely. I mean, well, I've been a Red Sox fan since '83. <laughs> you know, and I, I get laughed at by all my Yankees fans all the time. But um, you know, it's it's paid off for itself. And in, 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 can I in, tell you how hard it was to buy a Red Sox things for you for either Christmas <laughs> or your birthday? Oh, it killed me. I know, and it's funny because my mom's a Yankees fan, my dad's a Mets fan, so they're tr- people are trying oh. to figure out how the hell I showed up as a Red Sox fan. But how did that work? Well, the, the story behind that is the very first professional baseball game I ever saw in person was in 1983. I was just a couple weeks shy from my 13th birthday. Billy was birthday. graduating from high school. Yep, and I yep. and I was just shy of my 13th birthday. And the very first professional game I saw was uh, Red Sox in Toronto at Fenway Park. Now, if I can correct you, maybe. Go ahead. Because it's a small pet peeve of mine. Had, yes. Had, had you seen Red Wings games here in Rochester oh, before Oh, yeah. Then? Okay. So I get, okay, yeah, I get where they, you're going with prof- that. Red Wings are professionals. They get paid to you play. You are correct. And I, I will stand corrected on that one. And I've seen many Red Wings mm-hmm. games over the years, especially as a young kid. And so, yes, you are correct. Many, but my first big league, major, major league, league game, okay. you know, my first major mm-hmm. league game. So, thank you for that. That's the, mm-hmm. I will stand corrected on that one very easily. Um, but my very first major league game was was Boston and Toronto. Now, I had watched many, many Yankees games on Channel Eleven, mm-hmm. WPIX from New York. Holy All right, cow! It's Phil Rizzuto. Well, R- Rizzuto Here for the oh money store. Oh my God, Rizzuto <laughs> and and White. Yeah, and and, and Bill. Let White. me tell you, White. Bill White. Yeah, yeah, he was. Them both of them were yeah, awesome they were characters. They're just, yeah. just, just true, ju- true gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And and they gave, they instilled in me a love of the game, not just the Yankees, mm-hmm. but of the game. 
but I'd never seen anything really of that of that level in person until Fenway Park, August of 83. Now, this was Carl Yastrzemski's final year playing, and uh, it was on his birthday that we were there. And uh, and so I'm here, and my, my dad's friend who lived in Ipswich, which is just uh, it's one of the big suburbs outside of Boston, had gotten us tickets. So we were eight rows behind home plate at Fenway Park on Carl Yastrzemski's birthday in the last season he was playing before he retired, or maybe the second last. I don't remember exactly. But I am 13-year-old kid, or a 12-year-old kid, about to be 13, and I'm just soaking in the aura of Fenway Park, which is just this amazing, it's, it's a living creature all into itself, and Boston fans are, are famous. All right, so I'm getting just in, inundated by I've this. I've heard that. And the seventh inning stretch, his father and his daughter come out with this massive birthday cake, and the entire stadium is singing Carly Ostrimsky Happy Birthday. Ah. Oh. OK, and then he gets up at the bottom of the seventh and drives in what will end up being the winning run. And so the you know it's the Boston's going to win. And the crowd was going just absolutely bonkers for their hero. He had done this amazing thing. He'd driven in what would be the winning run. And he just he kept going in the dugout and popping out and waving his hat to everybody. He'd go back and, and people were screaming for him. He would come mm-hmm. out. They were still screaming for him to come out and wave his hat, even though he was back out in the field for the top <laughs> of the eighth. <laughs> The top of the eighth was out, and he's out in left field, just you know, waving his hat mm-hmm. to people, and they're just going nuts. And I'm, that's it, you know, for a, an impressionable kid. It's over. Yeah. It's over at that point. I was like, Red Sox T-shirts, Red Sox, you know, everything Red Sox at that stage. And then the heartbreak of the '86 series. You yay, know, is a Mets fan. Yay, yeah, as a Mets fan. Yay. I mean, more power to the Mets. They yeah. they they played hard and they took advantage of 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 Buckner and all that other fun stuff that mm-hmm. happened. But you know what? I was still. I was. I was. Not going to turn my back on my team at that point. I was in. As you shouldn't. I was in. Excellent. It was over. I love, uh, so baseball, I'm a big Olympics fan. Really? I love the it's Olympics. Interesting. interesting. I, I, you know what? And I'm really, I'm very unhappy with the, the level of coverage for the past couple of games because I don't think NBC is doing a very good job. But I discovered the Olympics when ABC, you know, the wide world of sports, Jim McKay, oh. all those guys, the Sarajevo Olympics, that was it. I was okay. so hooked. I love Olympics. I really do. I, so every every couple of years when the summer I, – the summer game is not as much as the winter game. I love the winter games. Winter games. Mm-hmm. I hate skiing, but I'll watch it on, on TV all day <laughs> long. I, can, I get into it. I'm like, I, you know, I, I, snowboarding. Feel, I feel for them. And, I, you know, the half pipe and all that stuff has gotten – the ice skating. I will not watch ice dancing, though. That's not a damn sport. <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there. All right. That's not a damn sport. What the hell? But, uh, you know, but I love the Olympics. I love baseball. I still play the occasional round of golf once every three or four years at this rate. Uh, what are some other non-geeky things? Is is reading murder mysteries, is that non-geeky or is that still I, I fiction? Just, Susan loves murder mysteries. I too, have yeah. read yeah. all the entire works of, of uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, the okay. Sherlock Holmes series, I think three or four times. So, of course, of my life, mm-hmm. uh, Agatha Christie's. Uh, Miss Marple and Hercule Poirot. I love murder mystery movies, uh, but it's got to be the classic stuff. Okay. You know? Um, but really, as of late, sci fi is just, mm-hmm. it's my thing. It's my jam. It's the stuff that I, you know, I, in comic books, in graphic do you, novels. Do you think reading in general mm-hmm. is a uh, key component to geekiness? I would like to, yes. I, I'd like to say that it is. I think that not enough reading happens because it's so easy to find media in your face these days with computer games and with YouTube and. With movies and and TV and whatnot and t- all the the TV series, that reading is kind of a lost art. But I still think it's a, it's a component that we should be pushing. We should be behind it and saying yes, read your comic books, but also read these novels and read these uh, read these trade paperbacks mm-hmm. and all. You know, make sure you're always reading something because it's just as important an aspect of being a nerd as mm-hmm. as in table topping and movies and TV shows and 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 et cetera, et cetera, and YouTube. Excellent. So. Okay. How am I doing? Uh-oh, here comes... Oh, she's she's looking forward to this one. I can tell by the look on her oh, face. No. Go ahead. If you had the chance, which Star Trek captain would you would have wanted to serve under? Oh, Ooh, wow, that's a good one. Thank um, you, Deanna. That's a, that is definitely <laughs> a good one. I mean, a lot of people are going to say Kirk and Picard, and I, I, I think the toss-up... I would up, say Cisco, probably. For me, for me, it would definitely be a toss-up between Picard and Cisco. Um, uh, Janeway, I, I liked Janeway as a character. Mm-hmm. I hated Voyager as a series. I th- and I think that was Fair more of, that was more of the writer's fault than the characters and the actors. I mean, the, the the characters and the actors were very interesting, but the situations and the writing of the stories themselves, I felt was there was a lot at fault there. And Enterprise, I thought, well, it had a ton of potential, but again, the writing shafted Enterprise. But for, for on, on the to, just to answer that particular question, it's going to be a toss up between Picard and Cisco, really, for me. Both both are pretty badass guys. Okay, so uh, leading from that question, mm-hmm. where on the ship? 
where on the ship? Um, I drive the car. That's that's a little throw in for my for my uh, for my daughter. She loves that quote. Um, but I, I would like to be the helm. I'd love to be to, to be flying something like a pilot of some sort, which is kind of funny when you consider one of my biggest fears in life is flying in an airplane. I hate <laughs> flying. Um, spaceships are much more safe. <laughs> spaceships are much more safe. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's a whole there's a whole kind of uh, a vision that you see of that. But I would love to be on the helm or or just in operations, helping keep the ship running. You know, running around, helping making sure things are being taken no care of. No red shirting. I would not red shirt. <laughs> Well, no, both of my captains are next generation, so red shirt red would be a command five. level. So I'd be, I'd be red shirt. You know, I, it, it's an equal opportunity abuser in the next generation aspect. Um, there was no shirt that got that got uh, beat up more than the others. Uh, so I would red shirt in, in next generation. But next if I gen- found myself in in old school, uh, and, and then somebody handed Original me a red series? shirt, I would retire from Starfleet that day. You that would make day. sure that you would have a last name. <laughs> I, I would, do I have a last? Do I? Do I have a last name? Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, that would be cool. That would be that would be cool. Those are good questions. Okay. Uh huh. Would you rather captain the Millennium Falcon or the Enterprise? Ooh. Okay. Um, I would go with the Falcon. I I, I would like to because because you it's but a it's smaller a piece crew. Of garbage. No, the, <laughs> the Falcon has its own charms. Uh, she's got to wear a counts kid. But I but the whole aspect, and I know I've talked about this um when we were talking about living in our our geekdom a couple podcasts ago, many podcasts ago at this wow. point. Wow. Um. I would choose the Millennium Falcon over the Enterprise because the Millennium Falcon A has a better range, but also B, it, it, you can do it almost on your own or with a small crew. So I'd grab a couple of my friends, you know, some of the gaming geeks or whatnot, and just go around and explore. Just go around and explore the universe on our own, you know, just kind of doing that thing, just doing our own thing, and with a small ship that can fit just about anywhere. You know, the Enterprise is a little clunky, but she's you know she's a three hundred meter, oh, depending on which Enterprise you're talking about, it's like a five hundred meter long Swiss Army knife. So there's a lot of you know, options and whatnot. A lot of decks. A lot of decks. Um, but that's a lot of vacuuming. That's a lot of cleaning. And <laughs> and, and I'm not up for that right now. But, yeah, I think the Falcon, because it, it has a further range. the Falcon has been cleaned. I, well, I think she has actually once probably in the past 50 or 60 years. But she has a better range, too, because you can go from one end of the galaxy in the, to the other in the Falcon. Like 12 parsecs. Yeah. But uh, the Enterprise is kind of limited because of warp speeds. Okay. We'll throw in the Serenity. Ooh. Well, the, Ser- the Serenity is a shorter ranged ship. Uh, but the the solar system that they operate in is very. There's a lot going on there. So mm-hmm. to be to be the captain of the Serenity or a ship like it in that that genre, that would be kind of in the in the Firefly universe. That'd be kind of cool too. I think mm-hmm. that'd be fun. Do you have anything for him? Uh, I got a couple more. But... Okay, go. I, go and see what, I, see what I pops actually, I'm up. working okay. on something in my head. Oh, well, oh here we go. Uh, well, we know that you're a Doctor Who fan. Uh, that is yeah, dyed in the wool right there. Yeah. So favorite old Doctor. My favorite old Doctor. Well, that's um. Tom Baker and Sylvester McCoy are my two favorites from the classic series. And with, with a lot of love for Paul McGann because he got shafted, but but I've heard a lot of the big finish audios that he's done over the years, and I and then his just his overall presence, the actor himself is just, I like I like Paul. Okay, um, the next one would be New Doctor, but I'm going to change it up. Mm-hmm. Favorite companion. Favorite companion. Ooh, that's a harder question because they've all <laughs> been got a lot to pick from. They've, yeah. they've all been a lot of fun. In the new series, since well, you know, with Billy Piper as Rose, you know, Martha, Donna, uh, Rory, Amy. Uh, yes to all. Yeah, I mean, really, all of them are good. But if I have to pick a favorite, um, that is hard. Amy. It's going to be. It's Amy. it's a hard choice, but it's going to be Amy. But I've always had a thing for redheads, so that's she. It, she has a she has a bonus point there. The the one I always felt sorry for was Martha. Yeah, she kind of because because you're following up Rose mm-hmm. and Rose basically set the bar for being a companion in, in the new series, mm-hmm. and so to to come second after Rose was going to be hard. But I think they did a lot of great things with the character mm-hmm. after she left when she was you know doing her cameo in Torchwood, and then mm-hmm. every so every so often she would pop back up into the series He's like a military leader. Yeah, that, she, you yeah. really show the you show the evolution of the character. So I, you know, no, I, I think uh, Freema Agamon did a great job mm-hmm. given what she was the position she was in. So I mean, and, you know, I don't want to throw shade. I can't throw shade on any of the companions. No, I, I mean, I even loved Clara. I mean, I think Jenna Louise Coleman is gorgeous and just had that perfect personality to mesh with Peter Capaldi. So when when Peter came out of the mm-hmm. gate there. So yeah, okay. So yeah. So I'm gonna have to say Amy, and that's a very challenging choice because there's so many good ones to choose from. Okay, and let's hop over to FC3. Okay. Where do you think, or what contributions can you see us doing? Okay. Um, you get somewhat the same question. Yeah, somewhat the same question. 
Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how FC3 evolves over the next, I'm going to say, two years right now for the short term and then five years in the long term. Um, and I know we've, we've, we've met some challenges, we've found some challenges and things that we're looking to overcome. I like how we've, we've um, come across very positive. We've, we've given the vendors a good show to play with, and, and they all seem very happy with what we've done for them. The majority of the ticket holders... Uh, who have come to the show have been very satisfied overall, and those who have not been satisfied have been very, uh, very constructive in in their criticisms. And so we've learned a lot just from that, and that's been a really valuable thing. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with more space, physical space, um, and then just as uh, as a show itself, I'm looking forward to evolving it so that it's more in the eye of the community, and we do more than just. Just the nerd stuff. I mean, I'm looking forward to getting involved. Um, you know, we're talking like there, there's a couple of ideas of putting together our own film festival and then having our mini con and, you know, on the off season and then having uh, special nights where we bring people in to do talks, even though it's not convention weekend, we're going to be doing little things like that. So, you know, participating in the Rochester community, not just, hey, here, we've got this big thing this weekend, but little things and, and contributing to other people's projects and and, and yeah, bringing a spotlight to local art scene and local music and local just everything else. Just, I'm looking forward to everything we're putting, planning on getting involved in. There you uh, go. How was that? I, I've yeah. got a closer question. Okay. Now. Because I, I think this is the uh, right way to end this podcast. Go to it. I think and this is for both of you. Oh, okay. no. I, I think you've got to turn this way then. And look I, at I, <laughs> one thing I like about hanging out with you folks is that you're you're funny. You guys are funny. Tell and me looks you, aren't everything. I, I want both. <laughs> He's got a voice for radio. I want both <laughs> of you to tell me your favorite joke. Oh God, my favorite joke is going to take this. Um, we're going to go to this pod. This podcast is going to go R-rated, uh, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll throw it out there. It's a little involved. All right, here we go. So there's this fly, and it's hovering up over a pond, and oh. this fish is floating around and swimming around. It looks up and it sees that fly. And you know, if that fly drops five inches, I'll, ha- I'll be able to nab it, and I'll have a really good dinner. And there's this bear, and it sees everything. It's, wow, if that fly drops five inches, the fish will get the fly. I can get the fish, and I'll have a really good dinner. And then there's this hunter, and this hunter sees everything. And the hunter thinks to itself, that fly drops five inches. The fish will get the fly, bear will get the fish. I can get the bear, and I'll have a really good dinner. Hey, I can get a rug out of this for the winter. And then there's this mouse. The mouse sees everything, too. Wow, the mouse thinks to itself, that fly drops five inches. The fish will get the fly, bear will get the fish. Hunter can get the bear. I can get the bait from the hunter, and I'll have a really good dinner. And then there's this cat. This cat sees everything, too, and the cat thinks to itself, if that fly drops five inches, fish will get the fly, bear will get the fish, hunter will get the bear, mouse will get the bait, but then I can get the mouse, and I'll have a really good dinner. And sure enough, it all happens. Fly drops five inches. Fish get the fly, bear got the fish, hunter got the bear, mouse got the bait, but the cat misses completely, falls right into the water. So the moral of the story is this. If a fly drops five inches, a pussy gets wet. <laughs> you did not see that one coming. No. Uh, you did not see that coming. No, I, I saw that one coming a mile away. Well, you've heard me tell that one before. I no, think. No, I haven't. But I'm just like I saw that coming but a like, mile half, away. Halfway through the joke, I look yeah. over at Tanya and she's just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna hurt you if this is going where I think it." That wasn't necessarily the punchline that I thought uh, was gonna be on there. I know. I know. I was, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying that's and that's I, I know a couple of other good ones too, but that's that I'm not sharing any I, of the I other ones tonight. I can't follow up with that. I, I would okay. go. I would go. It was like, why is six so afraid of seven? Oh, I love that joke. Because seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. nine. There yeah, you go. That's, that's good. Old, that's trying the truth. There we go. That's educational humor right there. That's there we have. go. And that's, that's where we're going to leave you. And this is the monkey clean business. Joke. Yes, and that's but that's fine because you you teach the young minds of the future. Yeah. I am uh, Chris. This has been for Billy and for Tanya and myself. This has been monkey business, and we have been having some fun today. And we're glad you're along the ride for us. No commercial break this time. No commercial break this time. (laughs) Follow us on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash FC3ROC. And we will talk to you again very soon. Have a great day.